Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do two problems, problem number 184 and 185. Problem number 184, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Problem number 184 is a very simple, very straightforward problem and problem 185 is going to be the exact same scenario, same setup. It's just going to be different numbers but the same, same, same type of problem. Do you understand? Here we go. We are told, we are, we are being asked rather to find three consecutive numbers, three consecutive numbers such that when they are divided by 4, 3 and 2 respectively, the sum of their quotient is 23. The sum of their quotient has to be, comes out to be 23. First of all, what does quotient mean? We, we know this from our previous uh, examples that we have done of this type. Quotient is just a very fancy way of saying, quotient is just a very fancy way of saying the result of the division. For example, if we were to divide 21 by 7, 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 3 is our quotient. So here, the quotient that we're going to get when we divide three consecutive numbers by 4, 3, and 2, the sum of the quotient has to be 23. The quotients have to be such that, the three quotients have to be such that, they add up to 23. So let's begin. There's three consecutive numbers, so let's call the first one x. If the first one is x, we're going to divide that by 4, we are told. The next one is going to be x plus 1. The next one is, this is x, this is going to be x plus 1. And we divide that by 3, we get this quotient. And the next one after that is going to be x plus 2 because they are they're consecutive. And when we divide this by 2, we are told that they all have to add up to 23. They all have to add up to 23. The very first thing we're going to do at this point is to make sure that our denominators are the same, that we have the common denominator. As long as we have the common denominator, we can ignore the common denominator. The common denominator will cease to play any role, will cease to have any significance, as long as every term has the same denominator. Let's have the common denominator. This one has a denominator of 4, this one has a denominator of 3, this one has a denominator of 2, this one only has a denominator of 1. How can we make the common denominator? Least common denominator, preferably. For example, we could do 12 will do nicely. 12 will do 12 will do nicely. So 12 would work as a common denominator, and so would 24, and so would 24 billion. But 24 billion was the damn silly thing to do. The least common denominator, the least is 12. So let's let's convert this denominator 4 into a 12. Let's, let's take this quantity and multiply top and bottom by 3. Now it has a denominator of 12. Take this quantity and multiply top and bottom by 4. Take this quantity and multiply top and bottom by 4. This quantity multiply top and bottom by 3. This one has a denominator of 2. Let's multiply top and bottom by 6. And this one has a denominator of 1. Let's multiply top and bottom by 12. Now we have the same denominator, we can ignore the bloody thing. Do you understand? So here we go. 3 times x is 3x, plus 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 6 times x is 6x, 6 times 2 is 12, and here we have 23 times 12. Let's just leave it like that for the time being, we'll see what happens. We have 4, or we have 3x's, 4x's, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 6 is 13. So we have 13x's plus 4 and 12 is 16, equals 23 times 12. Now at this point, it doesn't look like we have any choice, but we'll have to figure out what 23 times 12 is. Uh, where can we do it? Well, there are, there are a couple of ways we can figure out 23 times 12. One is to realize that instead of, instead of Instead of 12 23s, if we had 10 23s, 10 23s would have been 230. 230 represents 10 23. We do not have 10 23s, we have 12 of them. We have two more 23s. Two more 23s is 46. So it's 276. So that's one way we could have figured it out, or we could have just multiplied, uh, multiplied it out. 23, 23 times 12. 23 times 12, if you could have just multiplied it out, 12 times 3, 12 3 is a 36, 6, 33, 12 2 is a 24, 24 plus 3 is 276. 276 is what we get here, 
let's subtract 16 from both sides. So the 16 drops out, and here we end up with 0, 6, and 2. 260 equals 13 x's. Well, that makes it very, that makes the life very easy, because 2 times 2 times 26, 2 times 13 is 26. So divide both sides by 13, and 26 becomes 2, and this 0 comes down, which means x is equal to 20. In other words, in other words, the numbers that we're claiming, in other words, the numbers that we're claiming are 20, 21, and 22. That's what we're claiming. At this point, what we need to do, what we need to do is make sure our work is correct. We make sure our work is correct. We're going to quickly verify it because what we're claiming is that the three, th three consecutive numbers that we're looking for are 20, 21, and 22. Well, the problem tells us that if we were to divide them by 4, 3, and 2, the quotient should add up to 23. Let's divide it. 23 di 20 divided by 4 plus 21 divided by 3 plus 22 divided by 2. 20 divided by 4 is 5, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 22 divided by 2 is 11. 5 plus 7 is 12, 12 plus 11 is 12 plus 11 is 23. It checks out. The work is correct. It checks out. It confirms. It confirms. Like I said, we're going to do two problems, very similar problems to each other. So let's do the next one. The right, next one, again, we have to find three consecutive numbers such that when they're divided by 5, 3, and 4. 5, 3, and 4, we are told that the sum of the quotient happens to be 40. Why don't you do it yourself? Pause the video, do it yourself, and once you have the answer, then you can resume the video and compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Shall we? I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Here we go. So this time we're just going to do it without too much explanation. Very simple, very straightforward process. It's very simple and very straightforward process because it's the same logic, same rationale, same methodology. So we have three numbers, let's call the first one x, in which case the next one is going to be x plus 1, the one after that is going to be x plus 2 because they have three consecutive numbers. We are divided by 5, 3 and 4 respectively in that order. Divided by 5, divided by 3, divided by 4 and when we do that we are told that the sum of these three quotients happens to be 40. As you can see we have different coefficients, or different, uh, not coefficient rather, we have different uh, denominators 5, 3 and 4. We need to have the same denominator, we need to have the common denominator. Common denominator will help tremendously. The least common denominator that they can find here, because, because of the fact that they are all different, so we have to multiply them out. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 5 is 60. So we need a denominator of 60. We need to make all the denominators equal to 60. So let's convert this 5 into a 60 by multiplying this quantity by 12 over 12. I don't like it the way it works came out, 12 over 12, multiply this quantity, we, we, want a, we want a 60, multiply it by 15 over 15, multiply this quantity by 15 times 3 is not 60, what the hell is the matter with me? Which I quote myself because 15 is what we need here, 20 over 20, 20 times 3 is 60, and 15 times 4 is 60, and we need here 60 over 60. Now they have the same denominator, now they have the same denominator, which means we have the luxury of ignoring the bloody thing. We can pick up our speed here. 12 times x is 12x plus, so it's going to be 20 times x plus 1 plus 15 times x plus 2. I, I shouldn't have to do this thing, we should, we should be able to go directly from here to open the parentheses like we did last time, I shouldn't have to write this out. Let's just do it, okay? 20 times x is 20x. 20 times 1 is 20. As long as you pay attention, you're fine. Do you understand? As long as you pay attention, which I don't. 15 times x is 15x. Which is why I tend to make boo-boos. And 15 times 2 is 30. That's because I'm babbling all the time. And here we have 40 times 60. 
So we have 20x, we have 15x, 20 plus 15 is 35, 35 plus 10 would have been 45, 45 plus 2 is 47. So we get 47x and then we have 20 and a 30 which is 50 equals 40 times 60. 40 times 60. Let's subtract 50 from both sides. So this is 2400. This is just 4 times this is 24. This is still too simple. Subtract 50 from both sides. Subtract 50 from both sides. And we'll end up at 2350 equals, this is going to drop out, 47x. 47x. So what does x equal to? x equals to, again I'm, I'm showing too much work here, x would equal to 2350 divided by 47. 2350 over 47. Over 47. And instead of writing 2350, if you leave the 2350 the way it is, listen very carefully, okay? Listen very carefully. If you leave the 2350 as it is, that will create more work. To divide this number by 47, I find it annoying. Let's write this thing as 235 times 10. And you will see in a second why. And I'm going to do that on the top so you can actually see it. You will see that to figure out to figure out what 235 divided by 47 is, it's actually very easy. Do you know why it's very easy? Think. Think. Can it be 47 times 1? It cannot be 47 times 1 because 47 times 1 will end in a 7. We need to end in a 5. Can it be 47 times 2? The answer is no. 47 times 2 is 14. It will end in a 4. We need to end in a 5. It cannot be 3. It cannot be 3 because 7 times 3 is 21, it would end in a 1. It cannot be 4 because 4 times 7 is 28, it would, it would have ended in an 8. It is 5. 7 5 is a 35, carry 3, 20 plus 3 is 23. You see that? It's 5. Which means, it's 5. Which means, since x is equal to 235 times 10 over 47, and we just found out, we just found out that, 235 has 5 47s, has 5 47s, which means x is 5 times 10, or x is 50. x we are claiming is 50. What we are claiming is, is that x is 50. If x is 50, then the three numbers that we are, that we are claiming are, three consecutive numbers that we are looking for are 50, are 50, 51, and 52. And we're going to verify our work. We're going to verify, make sure that these are in fact the numbers that we're looking for. The problem told us that we would divide the first number by 5, the second one by 3, and the third one by 4, that they added up to, they added up to 40. Let's see what they added up to. This, this part is very easy. This is just 10. How many, how many 3's does 51 have? How many 3's does 51 have? How the hell do I know? Don't look at me. I know 5 has 1, 3. I know 5 has 1, 3. That I do know. 5 only has 1, 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21, and 21 has 7, 3. So that's 17. Let's divide that by 4. But this is very easy. 52, 52 is just 40 plus 12. It's 40 plus 12. 40 has 10, 4, and 12 has 3, 4, so it's 13. Oh, there you go. There you go. 13 plus 17 is 30, 13 plus 17 is 30, and 30 plus 10 is 40. They do add up to 40, just like they're supposed to, just like they're supposed to, which means our work was, which means our work was correct. And the three consecutive numbers are indeed 50, 51, and 52. I know.